Hi, I'm Scott Patton, the Dean of Blogonomics and Pedology, and I have over 100 courses on Udemy. They're amazing video courses, over 4,100 reviews with a 4. Point, almost 4.3 out of 5 star average. And yeah, I've been doing internet marketing since uh, the very, very early 2000s, been podcasting since 2005. And one of my focuses is doing courses on Udemy. And the reason why I do the courses on Udemy is it because it gives me a non-hourly revenue stream that varies a little bit from month to month, but doesn't go from zero or down to zero uh, so far any month. In other words, there's always consistent sales coming through, of which I have very little to do. So at this stage of my life, I've been thinking about, hmm, how can I create these residual streams of income? And Udemy is one of them. And there's a few others, but I really want to focus this talk on Udemy. So I received some questions, and I thought rather than write the answers down and just send them to this one person who asked, thank you very much for asking, that I would make a video and kind of cover them as best I could in this video. And this may end up being a number of videos, but I'm going to make one long one which covers everything for my questioner. And the first question was, one, is it worth creating online courses on Udemy and receive very little revenue? Well, the Quick answer is, of course not. <laughs> Why create courses and receive very little revenue? However, the long answer is, if you're creating courses, I just want to check to make sure she did say courses, uh, as a collective, they can be bringing you in a nice income. And also, like anything else, uh, you know, if you're starting out, your first course isn't going to be that great. And a year from now, when you've done 10 courses, you're going to look back at the first one and say, yeah, wasn't that great. So anything that you do takes time to understand the system, understand the process, understand what's good quality, understand what your target market wants, and all of those things. And you can sit on the sidelines and take years and years and years thinking about making a course, or you can spend a few hours and make your first course, get it out of the way, and see what you think. A lot of times... I like to hike, and I use the analogy of hiking. I want to go to the top of the mountain over there, but there are hills in the way, and I have to go over these hills. So I follow the path up to the top of the hill, and, oh, there's a river there, so I need to detour, or there's a bridge there, or there's a really nice meadow there with flowers, or there's a bear there. I mean, you don't know, and if you're not taking action and you're not taking your steps, you never will find out. So... Is it worth creating online courses on Udemy and receiving very little revenue? If your passion is teaching, if you want to change the world, if you want to become a better speaker, if you want to teach people the things that you're passionate about, then absolutely, because we all have courses, those of us that have more than one, that does worse than the other courses or does very little. And if you hadn't done that course, you wouldn't have gone through that process. Or would it be better if we invest our time elsewhere? So if you wonder if you should invest your time elsewhere, then I think you probably should invest your time elsewhere, right? If you're committed to teaching people, uh, changing the world with your education, what it is that you're teaching them, then this is a non-issue. Now, it could be, the question means, should I be going elsewhere to host my videos? And this is a really, really interesting question. What I love about Udemy is the fact that Udemy does the selling. So I have a co-instructor approach me. They've got this wonderful knowledge and expertise, and they've taught it to 20 people in the world, and nobody else knows who they are. That's an incredibly difficult project where you just take the course, put it up on a website, and drive traffic because you have no following, you have no... Uh, reputation, you have nobody understanding who you are, you don't have proof necessarily of the quality of your work, and there's no word of mouth going around and all that sort of good stuff. So I have really, really good friends that are great at driving traffic and great at creating community, you know, uh, and they've got already got thousands and thousands of people that want their information. Good idea. To those people, I would say, 
create some very simple courses on Udemy as another lead generation stream to get into your all the other things that you're doing. Uh, so you've got Google AdWords, you've got Facebook ads, you've got YouTube videos, you've got tweets, you've got groups on Facebook, you've got lots of ways today to, con to have people find you. And if you're good at all of those things, great, no problem. Put it up on Teachable or Thinkific and uh, drive a ton of traffic and away you go. For those people who say, you know what, I am a really good baker, I'm a really good piano teacher, I'm a really good English teacher, I'm a really good software programmer, I'm really good at stock options, I don't want to spend any time doing anything except what I'm really good at, what I love, then Udemy is perfect for you. We have a program, in three hours your course is up, and you don't have to do anything but show up, be yourself, share your information, and you're done. So if you don't want to use Udemy, you need to be an excellent mark marketer. And most people are bad marketers. I'm not even a good marketer, and I'm not a bad marketer. Right? But it's just, you know, like, you have to think of what are the things you love doing and how much time do you want to spend doing those versus learning things that you may really dislike, like split testing or creating funnels, and creating duplicate funnels that you split test. And on and on and on she goes. Most of the people that I work with are people that really are good at what they do and they don't want to be good at anything else because that anything else is not where their passion is. So uh, there's a lot of people that don't want to know how to drive traffic online and how to make Facebook ads. And, and if you do that, by the way, if you do do Facebook ads, there's a really good chance until you get good, you're going to have an expensive education. You know, I advise you getting a mentor or if you've never done it or a coach or working with somebody on any of these areas that you don't really know what you're doing because otherwise you're going to make all the mistakes that everybody makes and it's going to be very frustrating and it's not worth it. So I'm a firm believer in these are the three things that I love doing. I love teaching people how to podcast and producing podcasts. I love producing and teaching people about creating online video courses and you know, there's a, you know, that's it. That's, those are the two things that I really focus on. I lo also love working with lead generation in local markets, and I'm awful at it. But I'm really determined to stop being awful at it. And that, you know, but that's my passion, right? I mean, if you hit the wall and hit the wall and hit the wall, and you're still going because you know, there are lots of people that are good at local marketing. You know, people can do what you want to do, and you just need to figure it out. Good on you. But if you're a really good painter and you love teaching people how to paint and going out into the wilderness and painting, right? And the last thing you want to do is be on Facebook, you know, or tweeting or any of those sort of things, then Udemy is perfect because you don't have to worry about all that stuff. Udemy does a lot of it. And of course, I am simplifying it a little bit, but generally that's the difference. If you've got a tribe, great. Put all your stuff up on your own site. Don't worry about Udemy. If you want more people in your tribe, then put up a couple courses on Udemy and drive them to your site. It's, it's great, but it becomes one of all the, whatever they are, traffic generation processes that you already know and use. And generally speaking, when it comes to teachers, there's very few people that have both the technical type skill and the teaching type skill because they are they're not really compatible in, the, in our minds. You know, you get your left brain, right brain. I don't have to get into all of that. If you have to ask the question, then I would say don't bother. Uh, like creating our own website and launching courses there. So the full question is, is it worth creating online courses on Udemy and receive very little income? Or would it be better if you invest, we invest our time elsewhere, like creating our own website and launching courses there? So the question really should be, is it worth creating online courses on Udemy and receiving very little income? Or creating online courses on my own website and creating very little income. Because <laughs> I'm going to tell you something right now. Most people make very little money from their courses, whether they're on their site or they're not on their site. Uh, that's because the money is not really in the courses. The money is in using the courses as a lead gen and having back ends. The money is always in your back end. So you do a course on... Baking bread, 
What do you want? Do you want people to come to your bed, bread baking retreat for three days in May? Or if you teach yoga, what do you want? You want people to come to your yoga retreat? Or you want, if you teach personal development and you're a coach on motivation, what do you want? You want the people to call you up and become clients and you have a meeting with them one-on-one -on -one every week or you do group coaching or if you have a software, you know, you teach them in Udemy how to use the software and the strategies and then what do you do? Then you get them to buy the software and if it's a monthly thing, you've got that monthly revenue coming in. So you need to look at your full-on plan, your full-on business plan and how you want to create your, your business and then how does Udemy fit in? Udemy has 24 million students. They all want to learn. It's educational. They don't want to be pitched. So how do you do all of those things so that you get people in? And I think it's the easiest thing in the world, right? You, someone wants to know about yoga. They watch your course. What do they know at the end of 90 minutes? They know you are an expert in yoga. So if they want to get deeper and get in, get know it more and and develop as a better yogi, yogi, what do they do? They contact you and they work with you. So that's the, that's the strategy and that's the plan. You know, they've, you've taught them, you've, you, you know there's more that they need to learn, they know there's more, and how do they get it? They work with you one-on-one. -on -one. So now you've got a $200 an hour client or a $500 an hour client. Uh, you know, so that's the, that's the way that works. What I love about Udemy is Udemy will bring you the people. They'll bring you lots of free people, they'll bring you lots of cheap people, and they will bring you a significant number of really, really good potential clients. And it's your job to take those people and serve them so that they want to become, they want to change from being a prospect to a customer or to a client, and away you go. Okay, so here are a few more questions that they asked me. How do you make enough money to live on creating forces, courses full-time on Udemy? Well, uh, first of all, if that's your goal, great. Uh, as I've said before, it's the back end. So you don't want to make your full-time in. I mean, if you do, it's great. But to, to suggest that your goal is to make a full-time income living in North America off of Udemy, I would suggest that unless you're very lucky in your topic, and your timing, that's not likely going to happen. There are 22,000 instructors, 25,000 instructors, and there's probably, you know, a thousand that make a full-time living. Now, there's lots of instructors in places like Romania and India and uh, Kenya and maybe Colombia who make really, really good income, which would may or may not be a really, really good income in uh, in North America, right? You can make a thousand dollars a month in Tunisia. You're living a really good life. So uh, that's something to be considered, uh, you know, to think about as well. Okay. So how do you make enough money to live doing what uh, I do? Is you make courses that are related to your core area of expertise, and you have a back end that you upsell people into that doubles, triples, and quadruples your income. So in fact. The money you make from Udemy is insignificant if you do this correctly. If you have a really good back end and you do the courses correctly, then that back end, no matter how much money you're making on Udemy, will be significantly more than the money that you make on Udemy. Okay, so you make course after course after course, so you get people in from different uh, different interests. You know, like every core every core topic area has hundreds if not thousands of subtopics in it. So you just keep hitting those subtopics and you know someone that wants, let's just say your topic is sales. So someone wants to know how do you close sales? So they take your course. How do you prospect? They take your course. How do you upsell? They take your course. How do you get more leads? They take your course. Uh, how do you sell online? They take your course. Uh, how do you manage a sales team? They take your course. I mean, just it, 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 you have all of these different topics and it, and you make all these little, and the courses are an hour to, to 90 minutes long. So you're not spending six months, 12 hour days creating the course. Forget about that. That is the, 
easiest, quickest way to kick yourself out of making courses for the rest of your life because there's nothing worse than someone. And this happens in the Udemy instructor group all the time. They say, I, I spent six months, 12 hour days, made this 10 hour course. And after a month of being live, I have three customers. So of course, who knows if your course is going to be good or bad? Who knows if your course is going to be popular or not popular? So why would you spend months and months and months without having a clue? You do one course, you find out what your response is. You do a second course, a third course, you start learning your market, you start learning what the students in Udemy want, you start getting more comfortable with the platform, you start understanding how it works, you understand the system that I'm talking about, and you get better and you get better and you get better. So someone starting out here is going to be very different over here two or three years later when they do courses on an, on an ongoing basis. They are more confident, they speak better, they're more outgoing, they understand their, their target market far better, they're experts at making courses, so what used to take four or five hours now takes 90 minutes. Uh, it just goes faster and faster and faster. And some of the advantages, which we maybe is the second, quest, second of these extra questions, in your opinion, what are the best and worst what is the best and worst of using Udemy for your courses? The best is you can get a lot of students really fast, and that gives you really good credibility. I taught podcasting for 10 years, and once I put my course up, all of a sudden, instead of me sort of looking for podcasting clients, podcasting the podcasters were starting to look for me. Instead of me knocking on doors saying, hey, uh, you know, you want me on, can I speak on your stage? People were calling me up saying, Scott, we'd love to have you talk about podcasting on your stage. So it opens up doors and opportunities that you will not get if you don't take massive action, right? When you've got 20,000 podcasting students, that's a lot different than when you've got three and you feel different, you act different, you behave different, and people around you want to be a part of it. So whatever your area of expertise, if you can prove to the community that you're in that you are a go-getter and you are a leader, they want a part of it. And when you wonder why nobody's paying attention to you, it's because you're not leading. You need to get out there and you need to lead. And using Udemy to create that credibility and that positioning is really, really powerful. The other thing that's really cool about Udemy is if you do go and make your own website and you need to drive traffic, a lot of times people will do Facebook ads, Google ads, YouTube ads. And what does that mean? That means every time someone clicks on your ad, you pay money. Udemy says, hey, every time somebody clicks on your course and buys it and becomes a lead for you, we will give you money. So in other words, instead of paying a buck or 10 bucks or 20 bucks for a click, it's a cold lead that you have to convince. You're going to have somebody who's paying, you know, Udemy will be paying you a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars to give you somebody that is really interested in your course to the point where they will buy your course. And they, that is the absolute best lead that you can get. And it's up to you to take that person and convert that relationship into an even deeper one with more things that they need and that you're willing to serve them with. Don't remember, you have to have a service heart. You have to be there to serve your your students, and they're going to want more and more and more of you. If you talk to the number one trainers, like Tony Robbins, or I'll use Harvecker, he's the one that told me this. He says, everybody takes your courses, and they want one thing, your next course. And that's what you want to create on Udemy, is you want to create this tribe that wants your next course, and they want more of you. And that looks like one-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching, retreats, uh, events, your book, all those sort of things. Number three, when you first started creating courses on Udemy, how did you start out and will it, how did it go and did it go well directly? What was your struggles? Well, the first course I created was my how to podcast course and it went great because my only goal was to get the course done and up. I didn't really care if it made any money. And it's my number one selling course for like four years. Um, how did I start out? I turned on the camp. I basically planned out my curriculum, what I wanted to talk about, which is what I share with people in my PDF who become partners with me. And did it go well? Well, 
first couple times I was recording on a beach and the waves were disrupting the sound, so it didn't go that great. But then I got the idea of, <clears throat> since I know my topic really well, why don't I do the introduction to each section? What we're going to be learning in this section is with Machu Picchu as a background. So I got my st selfie stick, I got my camera, I put it up, I walked around Machu Picchu and I talked about this is what podcasting is, this is what you're going to learn in this section about how to make a podcast, this is how you're going to set up your podcast hosting, blah, 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 and everything else. So uh, it went great, you know. Uh, what were your struggles? That was no struggle, right? I don't believe in struggle, to be quite honest. I believe in challenges, and there's certainly lots of challenges. Uh, I got excited about it, and then I started telling my clients and my friends who were experts in, about it. They got excited about it. Of course, ignorance is bliss. I didn't realize that, uh, you know, a lot of students are deep discount students. So when I saw $200 for a course and 5,000 people in the course, I did the math and everybody got excited soon realized that the reality of the situation but uh, by then it was too late I had five courses recorded and was in the process of getting them edited and uh, the rest they say is history so I can't say this enough you need to have a service heart you need to be giving and you need to take massive action there are very few people who will do one course and that course is a hit and even fewer people where that is the first course they've ever done. So that's just not how it works. It doesn't work in any aspect of life. There's always growing into and becoming better and improving. So, um, and I tend to tell more of the bad stuff to my potential partners because I don't want them coming in thinking, oh, this is great. I'm going to be making thousands of dollars in a week. Uh, no. I don't know any business that does that. If you do, let me know. Number four is, do you work full-time on creating online courses? No. Why would I? That's like a job. Travel around the world. By the way, I'm in Kauai right now. I don't know. This is kind of what it looks like. Hopefully, that's a good picture. And I, maybe I put full-time hours in. I don't know. I don't punch a clock. I don't pay attention to that. I don't care about it. I care about my life and my lifestyle and the people in it and the people that I love. So um, doing the courses gives me the opportunity and the wherewithal and the resources to live the life that I want to live. Last 18 months, if, you, if that's of any interest to you, I've been in Africa, I've been all over Europe, I've been in Central and South America, and I've actually been home for a couple of weeks. In the next couple months, I'm going to be home. I'm going to be a grandpa. Yay. So, uh, yeah. The answer to this question is, what sort of life do you want? Draw it out. Write it down. See if it really re what you write down resonates with you, or you're writing down what you think people, society thinks your life should be. And then you need to really focus on that. Put your energy into creating that life. Put your energy into creating courses, if that's what you choose to do, right, as your vehicle. Put your passion into something. And passion, you know, is about, I don't care if I'm paid, right? Like the person that did this painting, you know, she didn't get care if she was paid for that painting. It's her painting in her house. So uh, that, you know, money had nothing to do with it. There's more to life than money. And if you have no money and you're struggling, that's a hard thing to hear. But Part of the reason you may be struggling and having no money is because you're focusing on the money and you're not focusing on giving. I've been interviewing a lot of millionaires lately, and I am astounded at how many of them say the same thing. You have to have a service heart. You have to take action, massive action, and you have to be determined and focused on one thing. So if you're an expert in a field, don't focus on how to make a course. Focus on teaching the course. Number five, any other tips you'd like to give me? Oh, hadn't really thought about that one. We live in a world of abundance. There's no lack. There's no lack of money. There's no lack of time. There's no lack of people. There's no lack of food. If there is lack in your life, you need to look in the mirror and you need to deal with it. There's lacks in my life. 
and I know I'm responsible for them. Even if it doesn't look like I am responsible for them, you have to take responsibility for them. So you can create the life that you want. I firmly believe that working with me and working with Udemy is an excellent way to live that life, but it's not about creating courses. It's about serving people in the best way possible and understanding your value. Okay? One of the people that I talked to has a mastermind. It's a year-long mastermind. It's $30,000. He has 10 people in his mastermind. If he had no expenses, he just made $300,000 for the year. And if his mastermind meets once every two weeks for two hours, how much time was involved? So there's lots of ways that you can make money without trading time for dollars. In other words, it's great if you're a welder and you like to weld and the guy pays you 60 bucks an hour to weld. Awesome. If you like doing it. If you don't like doing it, it's a really bad thing. So you can find other ways to make money besides the one that our society teaches, which is go to school, learn how to count, learn how to spell, work at McDonald's for a couple of years, and then work somewhere else and get totally tied to your mortgage, to your job site, and to the environment that you're in. We live in a wonderful, massive world with lots of amazing places, and I think it's a real shame if you don't get a chance to see them. But that's me. Maybe you hate travel. Maybe you love where you're at. Good for you. Create the life that you want. And it requires turning off the TV, turning off the radio, getting away from everybody that you know, heading out into the woods or the beach or the mountains or someplace with a piece of paper and a pen, and actually sitting for a while and listening to yourself. Because yourself knows what's good and what's bad and what it likes and what it doesn't like. But the problem is, is our conscious mind does not listen to our subconscious mind. And then our subconscious mind sabotages us because, hey, you're not listening to me. Like a five-year-old child having a temper tantrum and you're wondering, like, well, what happened? I'm really determined to do this. Yeah, that's the 5% conscious mind. The 95% subconscious mind is throwing up and stressed out and can't stand the very idea of whatever it is your conscious mind has dreamt up because the conscious mind has been influenced by TV and society and the internet and fake news and real news and this and that and everything else and all the marketing that goes on and you never have time to be quiet and really understand what you want. So that would be my tip. Go spend a week being quiet. And at the end of the week, not the beginning, you'll have a lot of insights because we've wrapped so much crap all over ourselves. It's going to take a while to dig out. And then create the life that you came here to create.